another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. And um, lately, uh, we've been involved with our new convert, Rob. Rob. My name's Rob Rankin. We've got another convert, Gordon, but he's a very busy man and he can't come. But um, our, heart goes out, our heart goes out to him. Shout out to Gordon and all the people over at Scotch and Soda, my favorite pub. But uh, Rob, as you know from our last conversation, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. It's a cool conversation. Um, we chatted about watches and collecting, and Rob's got a couple of heavy hitters in his collection. He's got two beautiful Breitlings, and um, he's been doing a lot of fun watch buying is the term I'd like to use, is fun watch buying. Like our friends over at Just One More Watch, you know, uh, he's been buying a lot of Invictus, Paganis, and the like, and we've decided to do some episodes, but then I realized I got such a great response from having Rob on the show last time, why not bring him on again and we can have the same conversation and by having him also involved it helps us um, explain things because there are a lot of things that he wants to know as a collector that he doesn't necessarily know yet and there are some insights he has because he's not part of the old school peoples that um, I'll be able to get some interesting insights from him which is always a great thing about these kinds of conversations. And Rob, mm -hmm. since you're the guest, I'll let you show off our beautiful uh, watches. Okay. And I'll drink this beautiful, this is the Castel Rouge I'm drinking. It's uh, a Belgian Lambic. A Belgian Lambic. It's a fruit beer. It's and really... I'm drinking a also Belgian uh, quadruple, St. Freudland. <laughs> if sangria wine was a beer. Of course, it's not glass, but uh, yeah. If sangria, sangria wine was a beer, that's um, what this... Yeah, lambics. Fruit. Lambics are a fruit beer for sure. I mean, Got it. well, in Fran, well, Framboise are uh, raspberry in that same field. If so, if you're a beer drinker, anyway, we're here to talk watches, not beer. But that's okay but because I people will, who like watches like beer. <laughs> I will drink that so I can log it in uh, untapped. There you go. But, I have uh, some friends who are all into that site. You know, I mean, that's kind of cool. I, I, um, everybody's got things. I, I'm too involved with them. A lot of other crap. Mm. Let's put it that way. Um, but you know what I've decided to yeah. do on a spontaneous okay. thing? Please, it's yours. Oh, because this is you the... gave me, yesterday you gave me, this man yesterday gave me a Breitling Deployant buckle for a leather strap, which is a beautiful piece of kit. I have a, as you all know, or I should say, the ones who watch regularly know, I have a uh, Breitling um, Navitimer GMT, and I'm going to, I have, it has a Tang buckle. Now, unfortunately, you have to buy a whole different leather strap to go with the Breitling Deployant buckle, because it's actually a very beautiful Deployant buckle in that, it is continuous. There are no holes in it. You, you, it's infinitely, infinitely adjustable because there's no stops. It's a leather strap. You just push through the tang. It's kind of like a D-ring in like a cabinet where it locks by the tension, not because there are holes in it. So it's a beautiful... But long story short, I just realized I should give him my uh, Rattrapante stopwatch because I bought it for the show to show about chronographs, but since I bought the Omega, I don't need this. And... It's his first stopwatch, pocket watch, hooray! Focus on that, all right. Uh, so, so hey, well thank you very much, Alex. Now, let's talk okay. Pagani. Explain yeah. to me a little bit before we show you the watches. Oh, and before we get into it too deeply, if you like the show, please subscribe. I mean, you have no, that's why everyone's begging all the time on these shows to please subscribe, because it is comically important and on this show I know for a fact that only that only 20% of the viewers are subscribed so that means 8 out of 10 people are watching the show and they're not subscribed I mean if you don't like the show don't subscribe but if you like the show please subscribe it helps a lot right you're subscribed I am subscribed I was gonna uh, <laughs> okay I'm one of the 90% so Pagan now explain uh -huh. to me because I know you do Invicta why did you jump? Because, I mean, Invicta is also an homage watch. So why did you jump from Invicta to Omega? I felt like I bought enough of them. I, I felt I... I you I, didn't I, buy all of them. <laughs> well, there's too many. Uh, I felt I had bought enough Invictas, and I got my fill. I, I covered my bases of what I was interested in that they made. And I was looking for somebody else that did other nice watches. Just nice watches in general, not specifically homages. It just turns out most of them are homages. Because um, if you're going to make something, you know, why are you not going to make something that is recognizable by the masses from the uh, bigger brands, right? Good logic. Um, um, again, they 
I, I mentioned in the last episode that Invicta does have their own line of watches that are their own designs, but it doesn't seem to be the uh, lion's share of what people are buying. They're, they typically fall into this is a Submariner homage, or this is Hulk a, homage. Yeah, or, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know the whole mostly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I just felt like okay, you know, in my uh, watch collecting, um, on the as we mentioned the the less expensive end. I'm like, all right, I've done my time with Invicta, and I'm doing what else is out there, and I, and I came across these Paganis, and I'll probably I have two here. We'll do some more close ups on these later. Um, but, uh, I'm like, well, let's try a couple of these, um, and, you know, see how these fare up. And I will say, though, uh, being that these are the Paganis that are Daytona homages, I actually like these, uh, copies better than the, uh, Invicta, in that sense. Um, I have no idea. They're more true in that sense? What do you like about them differently? Um, I think it's, it's more accurate of an homage. Uh, than the Invicta versions of them, and I have two of them that I don't know if well, you've seen them or not, but... If I may interject real Just quick. by physical look. Go ahead, please. Well, I was going to say, that, um, don't forget, mm -hmm. Invicta has a heritage of their mm -hmm. own, so they don't want to be too homage -y, so they want to they want to genuflect in the direction of, role of the mm -hmm. our people, um, whereas Pagani has no... They don't make it look as good. Yeah, they're Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they're not... And yeah, they could be, yeah. they could be Czech. I mean, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the thing is, is that they have no, they have nothing to lose, so they can just look exactly like All it. Right. As long as they have someone else's. Well, you know, for example, our friend Adrian at Just One More Watch, he talks about a lot um, how some of these homages have comically misspelled names. But they're really good homages. So, they might be pulling an Ed Wood, Ed Wood the director. Because yeah. uh, some people thought that Ed Wood deliberately made shitty movies to slide his message under the censors. So maybe those companies that have horrible misspellings of the names, those homages, mm -hmm. are deliberately trying to avoid lawsuits or anything because they're like, oh, come on. Well, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're going to go out of your way. You're not going to do Dolex, you know, with the same it, crown or whatever. Exactly, yeah. but then, then again, those yeah. watches are some of them are really good homages. Sure. So they, they, they kind of dodge around the issue by not even putting their name on it by putting a totally fudged up name on it, then they don't even have to worry about it. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, in the looking into the Pagani uh, brand, um, I stumbled across uh, an option when you actually go to the Pagani website that any make model of their watches, you can get them blanked out with your own logo. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a minimum of 300 watches uh, minimum three, you had to buy minimum 300, but you could choose your uh, mo your movement that went into them uh, within, I think, what, what, which is capable of the uh, complications on the face, um, and boxes, paperwork, and have it all branded to yourself. So that made me think, oh, that's really cool. Like if I could actually afford and I wanted to have them make me, you know, I could call them, you know, Rankin watches or what have you. Um, but if they are willing to do that, and I was thinking as an individual, what other companies are out there <laughs> selling watches by whatever name that are really just Paganis that some other XYZ company paid them to say, oh, we're going to make you a thousand of these, but it's going to have a different brand, uh, logo on it, but it's literally the same watch. Well, you know, okay, here, let me jump up a second. Yep, fair enough. Plus de change, plus de même shows, mm -hmm. my friend. The okay. more things change, the more things stay the same. This... Oh, the surfboard. Well, no, this is... I had the surfboard. Okay. I, I, used to have a, I used to have a surfboard. This is kind of like... I don't know what you would call this layout. But uh, this is that chronosport you've seen me talk about. And, um... This watch was made in the 70s. Okay. This watch was ordered out of a catalog. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Some Sears. guy. No, I'm just saying. No, but, but in other words, <laughs> I'm thinking the old Sears and Roebuck catalog. No, no, no I meant like watchmaker. Catalog, yeah. A watchmaker's catalog. They used to have those, and they still do. Um, so basically, some company, uh -huh. it could even be somebody like Walkman, uh, some company ordered the parts for this watch off a shelf, 
assembled them uh -huh. and sold them under their name Konosport. If you look up Konosport and you at Google, but it was there's nothing, yeah. literally nothing. The company okay. is just right, right. So, like I say, Plus de Change, Plus de Même shows. You've got now the ability with modern manufacturing. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I thought was interesting when I lived in New York City. I grew up in New York City. When I go to Canal Street, I notice the quality of the clones kept getting better and better mm -hmm. and better. That's because machining is getting better and better. The, you, there's no such thing as shitty CNC equipment. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, if you buy a either, CNC it's machine... CNC or it's, yeah, it's, it's tolerant. Or you're, or or you're grinding by hand. Right? <laughs> you know, either you're in a CNC machine or you're using a drill press. And, and so you... you you're going to have a certain level of fit and finish mm -hmm. with even the crappiest piece of crap. The, 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 the truth is going to come out in how it's put together, mm -hmm. how they design it. Because if they don't design it to fit together well, it's not going to fit together yeah. well. Quality control, manufacturing tolerances, because I could design it perfectly, but if my, my, my CNC machine hasn't been adjusted in a long time and it's off by seven microns or something like that, mm -hmm. nothing's going to fit. It's, you think um, about it as a comical well, difference, but that's, you know. And we're about ready to find that out between these same two supposed identical oh, right. models, because one of the things we're going to do here is we're going to be swapping no, the bezels he, on these what two. He, uh, okay. What he wants to do, I, I think they're fine, so, but he wants to swap bezels on do these you things. you think that they are dead nuts exactly the same? Will this bezel match up to this bezel? We'll, we'll find out. Versa. That'll um, be the next episode, <laughs> by the way. We're going to film it after this episode. Yeah, or... Okay. If we can remember. Um, should we uh, show them that, though? So, these are both Pagani... Well, no, actually, uh, this is the part of the show where uh -huh. we're going to, like, overlay the close-ups of these right okay. now. So, All right. And actually, what, what I'll do is I'll even make a waving motion, and what I'll do is we'll do a little close-up, and okay. you record a little voiceover, okay. and then we'll splice it directly into the middle. Okay. Okay, so right. now we can continue. And so now... And so now, um, let's... Unwrap them because he still mm -hmm. has all the stickers on them. And <coughs> Brand new. You had yep. pointed out to me that one of them says sapphire. Well, they both do actually. The uh, the the uh, the film that's uh, covering the crystal supposedly says sapphire. Could be. Could be. They both say sapphire on it. You know, with the. Uh, we'll find the, out. The we'll find, find out. out. So. We'll uh, find out. And peel that off now. Well, you know. Yeah. This one's obviously not. <laughs> yeah. Here for for control. My, uh, oh right, wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Omega Seamaster GMT. And it is sapphire crystal. All right. All right, that film is off. And the this, film is off, let's check. And this is. Oh, it's sapphire. Wait, did it? Did the heck yeah, it's, it's sapphire. I heard the beep. See? Oh shit. It's sapphire, so they're All right. right. Well, now, the thing is, though, they wouldn't write it down if it wasn't true. Well, I mean. Maybe. And mine is a an Invicta Grand Diver 47 mil automatic that is using a Seiko, uh, I'm not sure of the movement, but fully automatic movement. Now, with our crystal check earlier uh, on these um, Paganis, it turned out they were actual real crystal where this, they use that flame fusion. They say it's a flame fusion crystal, but it doesn't register at all. It's not sapphire. One, well, they didn't say it was sapphire. One didn't... bit so ever, yeah. It's, it's, you know, really it's, good it's crystal isn't sapphire. Window pane glass for all I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's harder than window pane glass. It's just not as hard as sapphire. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't register anything on your... Well, window pane glass wouldn't either. Here, why don't you strip mm -hmm. these while we keep talking? Yeah. Okay. Those kinds of things go on. You know what I think about stickers is lately I've been seeing a lot of people wearing their Rolexes with the stickers with those on. on. Well, because well, it's better than leaving them in a vault. Because think about it, a lot of people just buy them and leave them in a vault. They just break it out to let it breathe a little bit. So well, I would rather see somebody wear the Rolex with the stickers on it than have them just like never wear it at all. But take the damn stickers off your watches, gentlemen and ladies, please. I mean. It's not going to lose that much well, money. The blue ones are going to be obvious, but the clear ones, that's kind of douche nozzling. Well, the Rolex is a very, the Rolex has very, very subtle... <laughs> no, Why does. would you wear the plastic wrapper on? You spent all that money, whether you actually got one from an AD or you spent three times as much going to the gray market. Why would you leave that junk on? So you can keep wear it. <laughs> because of the residuals. You want to be able to resell. So, but you can't say it's brand new if you wore it. 
Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> saying there are people who will pay more with stickers on it, and some people think that's important. Huh? I do not, but I like to wear my watches. You know, I mean, um, and actually, you know, what my big debate is right now is I'm thinking about uh, getting a. Uh, I have a Zenith uh, Chronomaster already, but. I don't want to get another Chronomaster, but I'm, I keep thinking about the new Chronomaster Sport. And so I'm debating selling the Chronomaster I have and then buying the new Chronomaster Sport. Anybody has any ideas on that advice, please leave them in the uh, comments. So, uh, where are we now? You're still peeling. Uh, no, that's all peeled off. Okay. This one, I think, was already pre-peeled. I'll give you my first impressions on this piece. It does have a screw-down crown, but it feels kind of... It doesn't feel bad, but it, it, it doesn't feel seamless, doesn't have that smooth... Because right. the thing is, is I beat up on Rolex all the time. That's all that um, still has the wrap around. They do make good pieces. And, you know, um, heaven help me, I keep thinking about rebuying uh, an Explorer 2. And the thing I don't like about that is I'm building up a war chest to buy a silver Snoopy if I could, or maybe at the minimum an Apollo 8. And uh, if I buy a Rolex uh, Explorer 2, I will have um, shot my war chest and possibly on the wrong battle. Mm. What would you say, Rob? I think you should buy the Explorer 2. Okay. So now, um, you think I should buy the Explorer 2. Mm -hmm. Give me your reasons why I should buy the Explorer 2. The push down, uh, the, the screw down pushers work. Uh, so, one of the things I do want to ask you is, why a rainbow homage, my friend? Quite simply, I... You like the rainbow? Can you afford 500 grand for a what? Well, actually, I think you can get them stainless steel for about 50 grand, but uh, typically you see them in the... Uh, well, it would be more of a case of... Or three, three to five hundred thousand dollar range. Um... But, like, Rolls-Royce or Bentley? I think it's neat. Oh, I just you like think the it's colors. neat. Um, it's unique. How many people do you see doing that? Oh, you mean the, but you mean the gemstone pattern? Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, yeah. and the funny thing is, it's the color scheme. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm more conservative, you know. It's a little flashy for me. But you're a flashy guy. You're well, a over the I'm, top. I'm, you're I'm, a rock and rolling world striding man. I just thought it was I cool. Just, I, I mean, it I is think cool. it's cool. It's a cool watch. No. And it's definitely, you know, it's with on a black face. And you, you got, you really got the ring of color. It, it just is. Well, the beautiful crazy. thing is, if we, are gonna, if we successfully swap the bezels, mm -hmm. you may win me over. Because once I see it on the black face, I might go, oh my God, that looks cool. But at the same time, we've seen this in how many pictures on Chrono and on websites when you see the actual Rolex Day. Yes, but that's an actual... But that is an actual... Mm -hmm. But that is an actual Rolex Daytona. That's mm -hmm. the difference between hiring a Marilyn Monroe lookalike and seeing a picture of Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. You're like, she's got the red dress with the polka dots. What's the difference? No, there's, there are differences, you know? Yeah, you may win me over. Mm -hmm. But the other side of the coin is, I do think it's interesting, the presentation, because as you pointed out, the blackface, they didn't have it with the rainbow, but the rainbow has this interesting skeletonized mm -hmm. face. Um, so but the black. sub dials are not chrono subs. They're not. Yeah. What where, are they? You, are you, they? You, 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 know what they are. Just, you know, just tell the audience real quick. So, a term, yeah, that took us uh, a minute to figure that out. Like, why are the, uh, why are the pushers, why are the pushers not doing what they're supposed to do? Why are the pushers even there? And it turns out that, uh. Well, they would be hidden pushers on a on another watch with yeah. these functionalities. The, they actually the do it. Well, they do it. They actually adjust the calendar. Yeah, function. they adjust the calendar function. Like I said, they would be hidden pushers. No, that's true. This one has no resistance, but Quickly. so the top pusher changes the nine o'clock uh, sub dial for the date. You know, Monday through Sunday, and the bottom uh, pusher changes the date. So the three o'clock subdial is a thirty-one uh, date wheel, and then the bottom wheel or the at the six o'clock position subdial is controlled, going to be controlled by uh, the main. Cheers to you all! Cheersy beersy! And you know, 
I've said it to you all in episodes, but I'm going to say it in mm -hmm. front of Rob. If it weren't for the people who think that what we have to say is entertaining, I mean, you may not think it's... Inform you may disagree with us, but you might think we're funny to listen to. It's not valuable. <laughs> well, I hope it's valuable. I mean, you know... It, it may not be valuable, but it's entertaining. Well, you know, we're talking about... Um, Timepieces, watch, well, name of the channel. Exactly. Mm. Um, and since it's a journey that everyone shares, I think the opportunity that I have to have someone who's new into it and is still full of enthusiasm and, well, I mean, I'm in full of enthusiasm as well, which is why I do what I do and I love what you do in supporting me to do this, so please subscribe, by the way. Um, but, you know, to have Rob on and to be able to share some of his passion and his enjoyment with what we're doing, you know, as I've said many times, I'm a journalist in my day job, and I love to interview people. And uh, in fact, I'm known for my uh, interviews in the embedded engineering space. I mean, you know, I'm big fish in a little pond. Uh, not too many uh, electronic design engineering journalists will run around with a full video kit. Uh, so a lot of people do text interviews, very good text interviews. I'm not saying that I do better interviews than anybody in my industry, I'm just saying I'm good with my video interviews, if I may say so. Um, I'm only the second time be, being interviewed by you, and you, you're the best I know. Never been interviewed I'll take by that. anyone before, so I'll take that. So, um, and enough of me, uh, self. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, Truthfully, I didn't realize that Invicta was such an homage company because they do a lot of their own stuff, and I was just really happy with the uh, the quality for a lesser inexpensive uh, brand. Um, but it, it just really got to the point where I bought enough of them that I wanted to branch out in my collection, collecting of pieces um, to do something other than sticking with the same brand all the time. And that's when I discovered Pagani. Um, yeah, that's it. So, what are you doing now? Breaking shit? Yeah, that, it, <laughs> you know, uh, is that the technical term? <laughs> it is trying to pop the It's bezel the technical off, term, yeah. isn't it? But I don't know where a good starting point is. Everything is very, very flush. I don't see... Oh, wait, no. I'm going... I got something here. I got something here. Boom. It's off. Nice! Hooray! It's off. It's... Just purely pressure. Yeah, so... There was not a whole lot. Well, then pop Once I got... I was worried about doing a lot of scratching to the side, which I kind of did. Getting it under. Getting it under, I scratched the... Uh, Hopefully it's polishable, outable. Well, I mean... Interesting. All right, well, there's one done. Okay. Right? So, let's... Oh, whoa! That exposed... That, that includes... That's not just the bezel. It's also the crystal. That includes the crystal. Huh. You wonder if it's the same way in the other one. That's uh, how they save manufacturing, don't they? I was going to say, because as I started, I'm like, One oh, second, let me can, zoom in. Let me zoom can, in. Let me zoom in. You can touch the... Uh, I know, but let me zoom. Let me zoom. The let, let, let the people... Wait, move your hand. Oh, sorry. Let the people see. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, back out a little. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, the whole thing pops right out. Mm -hmm. But it includes... It's not the bezel. It's, it's the it's bezel and the, the crystal. Bezel and the crystal. Yeah. Wow, that's 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 wild. It's the bezel um, and the crystal. Thank God I held myself back. I was getting ready to like touch try something. and feel the crystal. I'm like, oh no, it ain't there. Nobody touched <laughs> nothing. To quote aliens, we're gonna have to pop. Nobody touched nothing. We're gonna have to pop the. Uh, you pop the other and hope the crystal comes off with the that same bezel. way, right? right? Yeah. Hope the crystal comes off with that so, bezel. All right, let's just leave that exposed over here. I wouldn't even put a cloth over it because there might be lint that would fall in that cause and, trouble. And uh, I'm going to let you, you seem to have good luck with that. If you could do me a favor and pop this uh, link off. Oh, the link? Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure, 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 sure. There you go. Thanks. There you go. That did not turn out to be as hard as I thought it was going to be. Did not turn out to be terribly, horribly painful. Oh, wait, let me make sure I can. No burning huts, no dead <sighs> villagers. No burning huts, no dead villagers. Everybody's happy. 
And like I said, we'll just um, splice this into the yeah. existing episode, make this a single episode, and I'll, I'll put it in the comments. So I used this one. We were going to make this two episodes, but this was a pain in the butt to make. Get up under there. Are you recording this action as well, or your hands blocking it? That's why we can't see oh, it. Okay. Something's a little different. I was able to. You don't have to. You don't break the watch just to make the camera angle better. No, I was able to. If I lifted it up a little bit there and then cramped it down. I hope that's plastic. I. Was it ceramic? It'll be a, you know what to pop off without damaging. Well, I think it's the same as the other one. The other one's a metal. Ah, <sighs> uh, but I'm. You don't want to try one of the try. You want to try a blade? Oh, that would leave a mark. <laughs> you you stabbed yourself? No, but if I run across the metal, well, that it will... goes. It goes to something I have said in other episodes. Uh -huh. It goes to something I've said in another episode. You got, oh, got it. it. Got it. Good. Got you it. You got to have a good tool because if it doesn't fit right, it's going to scratch your piece. Got it. So. Did the bezel? Did the did the yep. crystal come off? But it did not. What? <laughs> 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 now is that because I need? It's to... a different construction. It's a different construction. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think if the crystal came off at the other, it's the construction. I don't. It can't be. I think I could literally no. take this and put it right the fuck no. on it. Uh, no. You're right. It's just floating the ground. It's not even, they're not even done to the same, t they're not even done to the same specs. Mm. They're not, done, they're off by like, you know. A whole bunch, look at that. Yep, they're off by a whole bunch. Yeah, well they're designed for different watches, my friend. They're off by a whole bunch. They're designed for different watches. So would you friend. look at that? Do you want to record this? It's all being recorded. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Don't forget, so the camera that is nowhere doesn't near. sleep. I mean, it's the same there it looks the same right they are built to different uh -huh. specs because they're doing different jobs well they don't what move. Is a... well they don't move so i would have thought they would have been the same being that they're the same ah but you know what the funny thing is That's... the fact that they moved would make them the same because they'd have to have the same aspect of running on a track around the bezel they, neither one moved so. That's why they could be at different specs because they're doing they're not, they only have to appear to do the that's same job. They bit, don't do the same job. They just uh, appear to do the same job. That's a stinky. Oh. No, why? Did it say on the, on the label of the box? No. Do not no. swap bezels. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was my hope. But you know what? They're I, each, I think our audience learned from this. They're each and of their own, their own thing. You cannot, even though they You know, I will make be... this an extra episode, mm -hmm. but I'll put it as a footnote episode. We'll just keep this separate because it would run, make the other episode run too long. Right, but I we'll gotta, make this a footnote episode. Now i got to put these back together and uh, think that I'm not going to be able to do what I wanted to do. And just have That's to live, right. live with the results. Live and learn, my friend. As you said, if it worked out either way, you'd be happy. I'm fine. I am fine. All right. So, hey, thanks for paying attention for this part, too. Or maybe we will just tack it on the end. It's not yeah. too bad. All right. The, uh, the laugh track. The laugh like, track. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> Take right, care, God. everybody. Please subscribe.